Hi everyone, welcome to the channel Sluggers Blue for your CAT VRC preparation. Uh, in today's session, we'll be taking up uh, an RC which was asked in your CAT exam in the year 2018 in the second slot. And uh, I've titled the RC as Illusions of Technology, 535 words, uh, five questions, slightly lengthy. Uh, and uh, so this is the, the first part of the session where I'm gonna take you through, uh, I'm gonna explain the passage to you paragraph by paragraph in detail. The second part uh, is where I'll take you through the questions, right? So the link to both the parts will be available. A link to the second part as well is available in the description and uh, link to attempt the passage also as well is available in the description. Okay, so you can check that out. Okay, now for those of you who might be watching these sessions for the first time, uh, I'll very briefly take you through the uh, structure of these sessions. Every single session caters to one RC, single RC, and is divided into two parts, part one and part two. What you're currently watching is the first part okay and uh, in the first part i take you through the passage uh, and explain the every uh, the passage paragraph by paragraph by the help of a schematic diagram the second part is where i discuss where we discuss the questions in detail for the, the rc okay now uh, you can also attempt the rc by clicking on a link which is available in the description of this video okay now 40 succession guys make up a course which is titled as an anthology of rcs Okay, for your reading comprehension preparation for the cat. I hope that's clear. Let's start. Okay, guys. So now the way we'll go about uh, understanding the passages. Uh, well, your screen is, as you can see, is divided into two parts. On the left side you have the passage, and on the right, right side you have this space where will uh, where schematic diagrams will appear as I read the passage for you. We'll go paragraph by paragraph. I'll read the paragraph. There'll be some schematic diagrams will appear alongside as I read the paragraph and then I'll explain the paragraph using the schematic diagrams and then we'll do the same for every subsequent paragraph. Okay, so that's how we'll go about it. So let's start with the first paragraph. paragraph. Uh, will a day come when India's poor can access government services as easily as drawing cash from an ATM? So the author starts a passage with a rhetorical question. He says that, well, will we ever see a day where uh, the government services have been so streamlined that uh, accessing them is uh, as easy as uh, accessing them, especially for the poor people in India, is becomes as easy as drawing cash from an ATM. Will there ever be such a day? So he starts with a rhetorical question and then he continues. Uh, no country in the world has made accessing education or health or policing or dispute resolution as easy as an ATM. Okay, and then he continues that, well, we don't know about India, but at least in fact, uh, like forget about India for a moment. Even even no other country in the world, no other country even in the world has been able to make these services such as access to education, health, policy, policing, or dispute resolution as simple as uh, as streamlined and as smooth as drawing cash from an ATM. Okay, and what is the reason? Then he goes on to describe, uh, explain to us what's the reason behind that. He says because the nature of these services requires individuals to use their discretion in a positive way now what does he mean by that see guys uh, in this uh, context the word individuals here refers to the on-ground serv service providers who uh, in, in these respective domains for example in so, so uh, for the government services it will, be, it will be the government government services it will be the government officials who interface with the citizens in case of healthcare, uh, in case of access to healthcare, it will be the healthcare workers who, who deal with the uh, consumers or, or the citizens here. And in case of education, teachers and so on and so forth. So basically the on-ground service providers, right? That's what the word individuals refers to here. He says that the reason why we cannot, these services, we have not been able to, or these services cannot probably be streamlined as much as drawing cash from an ATM because mainly because of the nature of these activities, nature of these uh, activities, which requires nature of these services require the individuals, the on-ground personnel, the on-ground personnel to use their discretion, the, sorry, to use their discretion in a positive manner. Okay. To, to basically to use their autonomy or discretion that they have available to them uh, as part of their job in a positive way for the consumer and a positive way for the citizen. Only if they do that, will we be able to get to a point where the where these services are so streamlined and smooth that it becomes as easy as cash as, as drawing cash from an ATM, right? So, so to improve service quality to that to that extent and uh, improve access to those these services to such an extent, what the most important uh, factor here will be uh, to have individuals 
who can uh, use discretion uh, available to them available to them uh, the autonomy available to them in a positive way for the benefit of the benefit of the citizens or the consumers okay next he says technology can certainly facilitate in a this in a variety of ways so technology can definitely help here it's not like technology has no role to play it, it can definitely help here but if it is seen as one part of an overall approach but only if it is seen as just one factor one small part of the overall approach that means the author says the author agrees that technology technology is a factor that will impact this process that will uh, impact this development but he also notes that it is not the determining factor it is not the core factor okay it is just a, a, it, it is just something it is just a facilitator here okay so and then he gives it a very short example but the evidence so far in education for instance is just that is that just adding computers alone doesn't make education any better yes so he has his uh, he, he has substantiated his point by giving an example that yes uh, technology is something that can make an impact but it is just a facilitating impact it, it will not be able to take care of everything right so as for example in the case of education just by adding computers uh, we, have, we have not been able to solve the problem of education any better right so it has a limited impact it's a facilitator okay so let's come to the okay so finally overall what the author has done in this paragraph is he has set, he sets up the context here and states his point of view okay his point of view is uh, is represented by this line okay this 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 is the by the way this is the core uh, idea that he is trying to drive home as you will five figure out uh, as we go through the rest of the passage this is the core idea that he's been trying to drive home throughout the passage okay so let's start with the next paragraph okay coming to the next set of paragraphs uh, the dangerous illusion of technology is that it can create stronger top down accountability of service providers in implementation intensive services within existing public sector organizations okay so what does he mean by that see uh, guys he's, he's he's again uh, he's continued the discussion related to technology as in the earlier paragraph he had said that it can only be a facilitator it cannot really be a determining factor right and now he goes on to say that uh, well it's very difficult like it's, it's it's almost an illusion for us to believe that technology can create this sort of top down accountability uh, amongst the service providers now service providers will be will be your the the ground level staff that is responsible for the last uh, mile implementation the last point implementation of these services right who the, the the staff that directly interfaces with the citizens right so he says that making them accountable ensuring top down accountability by use of technology let's say for example monitoring systems monitoring how well they are able to how well they are meeting their targets how well they are uh, delivering the services uh, right so so and, and top down basically refers to the hierarchy right so so uh, if you're trying to uh, maintain top down accountability they are basically mean to say that the person at the lower level of hierarchy is accountable to the person at the slightly higher level of hierarchy and who's accountable in turn to a person at, a, at an even more level higher level of hierarchy so he says that just by just just by having monitoring systems for example or technology some some uh, intervention of technology at at in the hierarchy to monitor uh, these to monitor people at these various levels and trying to make them accountable just doing this just by doing this like, like believing that technology by doing this will be able to get to us a point where uh, we'll be able to deliver these services in a very streamlined and a very smooth manner uh, provide quality service and access that's an illusion okay that's an illusion so that's what he says in the first sentence coming to the next part uh, one notion is that uh, electronic management uh, information systems EMIS, EMIS keep better track of inputs and those aspects of personal that are EMIS visible can lead to better services. Okay, he says that one of the notions is that uh, in electronic management information systems, so again monitoring systems in a sense, slightly more sophisticated probably monitoring systems and management and manage, management inform, information systems right where you take where you keep record of what has been done and what has not been done plan things etc uh, so one notion is that that electronic management information systems keep better track of inputs and those aspects of personal that are emis visible that can be actually monitored those aspects of the personal that can be actually monitored by emis they can those aspects can be uh, the EMIS systems can keep better track can keep better track of those aspects and can lead to better services. This is a notion. This is one of the notions. A recent and then he goes on to cite a study here to demonstrate how this notion is 
uh, way of the mark. Uh, he says that a recent uh, study examined attempts to increase attendance of auxiliary nurse midwife ANMs at clinics in Rajasthan. So there was a recent study which was conducted to attempt, uh, which was uh, uh, a recent study examined attempts which were made to increase attendance of the ANMs at clinics in uh, Rajasthan, which involved high tech time clocks to monitor attendance, right? So these, these attempts to increase their attendance involved usage of some monitoring systems or high tech time clocks to monitor their attendance, right? And this study was trying to study those attempts to increase their attendance, okay? So, and uh, the study's title says it all. The title was Band-Aids on a Corpse. Okay, so what the author means to say here is that the study, obviously, the study's titles uh, tells you everything that you need to know about what the study found, right? How effective these monitoring and these technical technological interventions were, were uh, in terms of Im improving the attendance or the services in the in the, in the, in the set in the set place. Okay, and uh, right. So so he closes it with that, and he says that. Finally, he says, uh, e-governance can be just as bad as any other governance when the real issue is people and their motivation, right? So again, he has come back to the same point. He says that, well, e-governance can be as bad as any other governments, governance when the real issue is not technology. The real issue is the people who are, the, the, the lack of motivation or the, or uh, of the ground level staff or the people who are responsible for the, the implementation of the final, of the final implementation of these services. Right, so that's what he says here. Next, uh, for services to improve, the people providing the services have to want to do a better job with the skills they have. Okay, so for so with skills, what is also required is intent. That's what he means to say. That, that right, that's the point he made. That technology is not really a concern here. For the service to, services to improve, the people who are providing the services, apart from having the skills, also need to have the intent, right? Uh, and, and in this paragraph, in the earlier paragraph, he talks about how technology is not much of a factor. In this paragraph, he seems seems like he'll be talking about how skills is also not the most determining factor beyond a certain level, right? So he says that providing services have to, uh, for services to improve, the, pre the people providing the services have to want to do a better job with the skills they have, okay? They need, also need to have the intent. A study of medical care in Delhi found that even though providers in the public sector had much better skills, right? So, so, so in the public sector, the providers had much better skills than the private sector providers. Still, their provision of care in actual practice was much, was much worse, right? Was, was, was much worse, right? So that means, so he has again demonstrated by giving, giving the example of uh, the Delhi medical care case uh, that uh, in public sector units where the providers were by way more skilled and the private sector units where the providers were slightly less skilled as relatively less skilled still the services of the public sector units were worse off than the private sector units that means the determining factor here was probably not prob was probably not skills was probably intent right that's what he's trying to demonstrate here okay let's go to the next no before going to the next paragraph let's just take down uh, the gist here of this of these two paragraphs so the, what the author has done here is he simply uh, compared the, the the one determining factor that he talked about the motivation and uh, the discretion to use uh, individuals to use discretion in a positive way being as uh, using discretion discretion in a positive way being the most important factor as far as improving these services is concerned that was the most important factor according to the author right in this case he has just considered he has compared with this primary factor that he believes to be the more, most important factor the other potential factors he has come he's done the comparison of tech and he said that tech again turns out not to be the determining factor and he's also done the comparison for skills as well and found that as well not to be the determining factor by and he's also given an example for that right so relative comparison of the other factors okay coming to the next paragraph okay so an implementation intensive services now implementation intensive services are the same services that the author has talked about that's the focus of discussion here in these services, the key to success is face to face interactions between a teacher, a nurse, a policeman, an extension agent, and a citizen. So, basically, face to face interaction between a service provider and a citizen. Right? So, uh, <clears throat> in these kind of services, the key to success is the face to face interaction between the service provider, providers, and the citizen. <clears throat> this relationship is about power. Uh, and Amartya Sen's report on education in West Bengal had a supremely telling anecdote. Anecdote is basically uh, a, a uh, an actual 
incident that may have happened in the past, right, right, which the author has related. So uh, Amartya Sen's report on education in West Bengal had a supremely telling anecdote in which the villagers, in which the villagers forced the teacher to attend school. But then when the parents went off to work, the teacher did not teach, but forced the children to massage his feet. Okay, again, he has given one more example here. As long as the system empowers providers over citizens, technology is irrelevant. Okay, so again, again, so to make one more point, he's, he's, he's made another point here uh, to, by giving an example. And the point he's trying to make here is that as long as the system keeps empowering the service providers over citizens, technology is not really going to make a difference, right? What is what you need to do is that you, you need to probably probably provide more empowerment to citizens or you need to probably hire uh, have service providers who might actually have the intent. Uh, so instead of forcing the service providers who, who probably are not motivated, probably have someone who's actually motivated, right? And and, and moreover, at least not um, like, like at least empowering service providers over citizens is not going to solve the problem and then uh, technology not, is not really going to help there, right? So, so that's about this paragraph. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, in the next part, the author says that uh, the answer to successfully providing basic services is to create systems that provide both autonomy and accountability. In basic education, for instance, the answer is to the answer to poor teaching is not controlling teachers more. The key is to hire teachers who want to teach and let them teach, expressing their professionalism and vocation as a teacher through autonomy in the classroom. This autonomy has to be matched with accountability for results. Has, this autonomy has to be matched with accountability for results, not just narrowly measured through test scores, but broadly for the quality of the education that they provide. Okay, so what the author has said here is that uh, well, now after having cited the problems of the various other factors, how they cannot really address the problem and how the main factor he has already talked about what according to him is the primary factor that will, that can help with improving these services. After all of this, that, that discussion, he gives his solution. What according to him will be the answer to successfully providing basic services. Okay, and he says that the answer is to create systems which allow for two factors. The first one is autonomy and the second one is accountability. Okay, and so far as to, and then he, and then he basically takes the basic education example to, to demonstrate his idea. He says that let's suppose let's suppose we take the basic education case for instance. Uh, in in this case, so far as autonomy is concerned, the the idea is not to control the service providers and try to force them that you have to teach well and, and try to forcibly you know like like the like they send the teacher to force that for the teacher to go to the uh, school and teach and he ended up doing something else. So the the, the idea is not to control service providers or try to force them, but rather just hire people who have the intent to actually go on and teach who actually want to teach right so, so, so that you don't have to worry about the intent and uh, motivation right select for intent select for motivation then and then he makes the next point about accountability where he says that and then this accountability this, sorry this autonomy also has to be matched, matched with accountability right uh, for results and then so that means you should also measure the results at how well the teacher has been able to deliver knowledge there and, and, and these results cannot just be narrowly measured through test scores and these results, results the measurements should not be just via test scores but should be more broad for the uh, and should, should measure for the quality of the education that these teachers have provided right so that's your first part next he simply mentions a study uh, demonstrating how when at least one of these aspects was deployed in a particular scenario how that uh, turned out to be successful okay so let's read through that he says uh, a recent study in Uttar Pradesh showed that if somehow all civil services service teachers could be replaced with contract teachers, the state could save a billion dollars a year in revenue and double student learning and double student learning. Just the additional autonomy and accountability of contracts through local groups, even without complementary, so even without adding any other factors, just doing this, even without complementary system changes in information and empowerment, led to that much improvement, right? Let, let to uh, what, what is the quantum of improvement? The state could save a billion dollars a year in revenue and double student learning, right? So, so it led to that much improvement. The first step, and, and, and now, and hence, now the first step to do this, uh, to being part of the solution now here, is to create performance information accessible to those outside of the government. And the first step to do this is to, well, 
make things uh, make the performance information available to everyone who's out, outside right so that so that that will promote accountability accountability here so yes yeah, so so finally he has closed with providing uh, citing a study that uh, in a way substantiates that the point or the solution that the author himself has offered in the earlier paragraph okay so in this case yeah so proposes a defined solution yeah and closes with that so done with the past let's move on to the central idea okay so the central idea of the passage can be subsumed in the following lines uh, setting up systems that promote autonomy and accountability on part of the service providers can be instrumental in streamlining quality delivery of implementation intensive services in public sector organizations okay so yeah okay so with that we come to the end of the video guys uh, now for those of you who have not attempted the questions you can attempt the questions uh, by going to the link in the description of the video uh, it will if you when you click on the link it will uh, take you to an interface where you can attempt the questions uh, and uh, once attempt once you have attempted attempted the questions and uh, you can move on to the second part of the video uh, where i discuss the questions of the passage in detail okay uh, again, those who have not seen the intro video or uh, who want to check out the complete playlist of all of these cat passages, uh, you can click here on this side. Uh, this will lead you to the playlist, uh, to the complete playlist, which has all the videos and uh, the description of those videos also has the links to attempt those passages. So you can do that. Also, yeah, subscribe to the channel. So that will definitely help. All right. Thank you, guys. See you in the next one.